Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The World Bank released its latest South African economic update this week, which included a focus on the country's shifting demographics. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss some of the findings. Hi Terence. Hi Fanel. The report says the window of opportunity is still open for South Africa to reap a demographic dividend. What does that mean? Well, we've got a young population and uh, over the last uh, 21 years, we've had 11 million people of working age moving into that working age population category. So theoretically, you have less, fewer dependents, both young and old, on that working age population. The trick is that w during that period, we only we didn't create enough jobs. So the trick is to create enough jobs to, to reap that reward. So we created about nearly 3 million jobs during that period, in addition to what we had, but 8 million uh, people, uh, you know, s 8 million more jobs were needed to really reap the, the demographic dividend. So in other countries, other parts of the world, having that large working age population, low dependency, has had major benefits for growth. Uh, China's been a major example, but East Asia more generally, where growth has been lifted by percentage points in certain instances. And you've had also higher savings levels, and there's been a virtuous circle that develops around that working age population. Now, what the World Bank has found is that South Africa, there was a few that we might be exiting that peak period of the demographic dividend, having had that, e that 11 million people moving in over the last 21 years, and that, we, that we've peaked. But this study shows that we've actually still got a long tail of, uh, of this demographic shift because of, the, uh, because of the nature of our population, and that up until 2069, we still won't have peaked in terms of the working age population growing ahead of those theoretically dependent on that work, working age population. So there's a potential if we can create enough jobs to reap major uh, economic benefits. And the bank is uh, uh, on sort of the best case scenario using the time frame of the National Development Plan, which runs to 2030, suggests that if we, we create the jobs for that working age population, which is going to be a really difficult or a task given that we haven't really been doing it up to now. But if we did, we could double the size of the economy. We'd be growing at about 5.4% growth rate every year. And we would really basically uh, eliminate uh, uh, poverty, extreme poverty in the country. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a major opportunity. It's one that has been, there's been a mixed bag in the rest of the world. Some have grasped it as in East Asia, others haven't, such as ourselves and the Latin Americans, but it's still an opportunity nonetheless. What does South Africa need to do to tap into that opportunity? Now that is the big question, and uh, it, it really requires a number of, of things. One, the main thing is to create the jobs. So we've got 280,000 people entering this category every year. So th it's a major a strain, given that we've got 25% plus unemployment on the narrow definition maybe much more than 30% on the broader definition with a lot of people discouraged from even seeking work in this country. So it's a major task. We've got this major backlog and, to, uh, and a lot of those uh, uh, people have never worked uh, ever in the formal economy. So uh, the World Bank's assessment is one of the key pillars has to be about basic education because what we've seen over the last 21 years is a mismatch between the skills emerging from the education system and the skills demanded by the the changing economy. So the, the lower skilled sectors of mining, agriculture, and construction um, uh, you know, have really been shedding jobs over that period. And the higher skilled area of uh, services has been the one area where jobs have been created. But so the view is if we can really improve the, that building block, that foundation of basic education and also align it better to the needs of business, that'll be a major win for South Africa. We also have to make some policy decisions about how we, the, the nature and structure of our economy, because manufacturing has also been shedding jobs over the, over the last um, 21 years. And that is seen as a, a major Im important place where jobs can be created on large scale. And there's a view that we need to focus on rebuilding that manufacturing sector. We're doing this in a time when there's a lot of manufacturing distress. But th those are the sort of elements, policy decisions, uh, um, definitely around education, implementation, both at the secondary and also the post-school. And it's not really only about tertiary, I mean about university type education. It's about vocational uh, education and training, getting those systems right. It's a really tall order, but it still remains an opportunity. 
In contrast to this positive assessment, the bank's near-term prognosis for South Africa is much more downbeat. Yes, we all know that living in South Africa that we are really not growing at the pace that we should be to address our triple scourges of poverty, unemployment and inequality. And we need to try and uh, find a way of growing at a higher level. The government has recently announced a nine-point plan which is really built around the National Development Plan uh, to try and stimulate higher growth and investment. But we're not really seeing it coming, feeding through yet into the figures. And in fact, um, the World Bank has downgraded its uh, forecast for uh, 2015 to 2% growth and 2% growth again for 2016, which is really not shooting the lights out. Last year, we only grew by 1.5%. And that means actually we are basically not growing at all because of population growth now, you know, outstripping the pace of economic growth. So we really are in a very difficult situation. And um, we're going to have to make some tough decisions, I think, to try and get ourselves out of this. We have to, one, deal with the uh, power instability, the labor instability that is a constraint on a number of sectors. But we also have to start really um, getting this infrastructure program going so that we have some sort of light at the tunnel for a lot of businesses which are feeling a, a, a lot of gloom and doom at the moment. And then I think a key issue that uh, we need to start really putting a, a great deal of emphasis on is this the whole opportunity of the rest of Africa, that regional value chain or the regional links uh, into that growing market has not properly been exploited. There is talk of a free trade agreement stretching from Cape to Cairo, but that has been really slow progress and painfully slow. And we haven't really seen the infrastructure, cross-border infrastructure being developed to really facilitate that trade. So I think uh, we need to start seeing uh, in the next uh, few months real emphasis uh, on getting some of these basics right so that we can eventually start taking uh, advantage of this opportunity of the demographic dividend. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.